Well, northeastern Italy isn't the typical Italian wine region. It fills your palates with crisp, fragrant white wines and even hearty German-influenced fare. And our wine expert and founder of Dallas and Cork, Haley Hamilton Cogill, was recently in the region and has brought some of their wines and their story here to share with us today. We got a little sneak preview during the break, yes. and I'm, I'm on so board. Good. Tell us all about <laughs> well, this region and what makes it so special. So I was in Alto Adige, northeastern Italy. It was a part, it was a, a region that's a part of Italy now, but for many, many years was part of Austria. Mm. So that kind of Austrian German influence is very, very apparent. Meat and potatoes. It is hearty, mm -hmm. hearty cuisine. I've got, um, this is just kind of a, oh, a wow. picture of the region. It's totally like your Sound of Music moment. Flying sure. in, you you really feel like you're in a completely different world. This particular um, wine or, uh, vineyard is at 8,000 feet. Oh my goodness. Wow. Just, just, and you're looking at, um, it's near the Alps, near the Dolomite um, mountain range. Um, and then, so you have very, very high altitudes, mm -hmm. which is one of its kind of key characteristics. So you have very, very high acid, very crisp, very fragrant wines that also lead down into um, closer to sea level mm -hmm. where you can also actually get really, really nice ripe red fruit. So, so then are they blending these two sort of... You have, you just have a really, really wide range mm -hmm. of, of varieties from... Gruner Veltliner, to Gewürztraminer, to Riesling, to Miller Thurgau, mm. to Pinot Bianco, which is kind of one of their signature grapes, to Pinot Grigio. And, and a lot of Italians don't actually drink Pinot Grigio because it is kind of too fruity for their palate. They kind of make it as an export product. Sure. They, drink it, they drink the Alto Adige wines, though, because the acidity is so bright and so fresh because of that altitude and also just a cooler kind of climate. Mm -hmm. But during the day, it's nice and warm that gets the, root, the fruit really ripe. This, of, of every trip I've ever taken, this one was one of the most special. And you do, you have these, these, these wines that, that typically might have a little bit of residual sugar to them, mm -hmm. but because of that whole kind Kind of diurnal um, temperature flux, you get great acidity with great ripeness. Really, really special. The first one I brought um, to kind of talk through a few of the wines of the region is from Tia and Brunner. That first photo of the vineyard up oh, in the so 8,000 feet is this particular um, vineyard, their Feldmarschall vineyard, where they grow Mueller Thurgau, which is kind of a German influenced grape, usually rather um, can have a little bit of a sweetness mm -hmm, to it. Mm -hmm. This one completely, completely dry. All of these wines. Wines are are food wines. The, any mm. of these wines for Thanksgiving would be perfect. Would be great, right? Light really enough corner. for the turkey. Absolutely, mm -hmm. light enough. Um, also, the the acidity is, is or the the alcohol isn't too much or too little. So you're gonna it's the you'll the, make it through the entire you'll make it day through without the day passing out with while still having a lot of great flavor, which Very is what good. you want. So, so one so. bottle to hang out with the in-laws. Exactly, it's all you need. <laughs> yeah, I did bring one of their um, Pinot Grigios. I had a photo of the um, Abiza di Novicella. Um, winery, their mm -hmm. gardens. It's actually a working monastery, which oh, is wow. still in progress. Um, and, and kind of how they work is by having these vineyards. And the vineyards and the wine actually pays for a lot of what the monastery does. This is their Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. um, it has, like I said, that great freshness. It has the fruitiness. It's going to have that kind of citrus and the apple and the, the melon and the, the honey kind of notes mm. with a lot of that great acidity. So it's going to not be so like cloyingly fruity that sometimes sure. Pinot Grigio can have. Did bring a uh, Pinot Bianco. I said that that was kind of one of the signature grapes of the region. This one is from Terlano and Terlano is kind of made a practice out of actually aging a lot of their white wines for a significant period of time. We had one that was about 20 years old, which for white wine isn't very typical, um, but they have, have really proved that because that acidity is still so, so mm -hmm. apparent, the fruit flavors get a little bit more dried. Maybe it's a little more caramel and honey instead of really Really bright fresh mm -hmm. fruit but still very very fresh and fragrant so it's great with Got food. It. Um, even a little bit richer food like and a these, roast turkey or roast chicken or something mm -hmm. like this. These what, bottles are my favorite because it's open. It's open and this, and this is, is what, what we have. It is. Try. This is what we have in our glass and there are two different varieties. This is from uh, Caleri Caltern. It's one of the co-ops in the region um, near Lake mm. Caldero. It's Schiava and Lagrine. Two mm -hmm. grapes that I hadn't really heard of until I got to this region. They're, they're pretty much indigenous to this particular part of Italy. Mm -hmm. um, perfect turkey wine. Oh like, my goodness, I think it's so good. It's light, it's fragrant, it still has some nice body, but it's not going to weigh you down, which is what you really want for Thanksgiving. Then the last one is Jay Hofstetter. It's their, um, uh, their Pinot Noir, their Pinot Nero. 
I was so pleasantly surprised to find such great Pinot Noir in this region. And actually with a little bit of age on it, it's gonna get that much better. This one was probably my favorite of the many that we tasted during the trip. Um, lots of that good strawberry and cherry, a mm. little bit of spice. What you expect from a, a Pinot Noir, just with a lot of that good acidity. So it's gonna be great with food. The, and, and the food that we had, it was- Unbelievable. It was, you know, they're known for their spec. Look at but that. It's also apples, apples actually, 80% of the apples that are, are consumed in Europe are grown in Alto Adige. So it's a huge oh, agri um, beautiful. region. Speck, sausage, pasta, oh. anything that you, you know, that kind of good hearty German, yeah. Austrian, Swiss influence fare with these light wines. It's incredible. I, I'm, I'm down. I am so. And that I just. I, I had to. You know, one of these days, I'm going with you. So. I want you to. Okay. I want cool. You to. Well, you can get details of each of these wines and where to find them, right? Yes, at Haley's website, and it's DallasUncorked.org. Check stuff. it out. These are really amazing. good stuff. We're gonna I'm gonna finish my cups. Yeah. Cheers. More Cheers. broadcast after this. Mm -hmm.